this initiative is a part of an arrangement and agreement made between the Prime Minister of Jamaica and the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago as we met last August to celebrate our 60th anniversaries and we made this agreement that we would strengthen our relationship through sport, through culture and that Jamaica would assist us especially as it relates to athletics. The Trinidad and Tobago government is excited to work with T.C. Foster College on this sports initiative as we seek to improve the delivery of sports in schools. This training program represents not just training our coaches, training our PE teachers, but having a deeper and a bigger impact where sport development is concerned. This workshop is aligned to the Ministry of Education strategic goals, which are to advance continuous curriculum planning and effective delivery to ensure continuous teacher training and professional development to ensure that programs are relevant and responsive equipping students with 21st century skills in order to contribute to sustainable national development goals. GC Foster College will train and guide over 65 physical education teachers, administrators and coaches from over 26 early childhood, primary and secondary schools for the purpose of building a sporting culture in the school system. Jesse Foster is the driving force in terms of educating physical educators and coaches in the system in Jamaica and that is why we continue to seek partnership with them to help us along our journey. Monday, August 15th, 2023, was a great, significant, and momentous day as we witnessed the development of an idea into actuality. The idea of capacity building in the here of physical education and sport is now transformed into reality. We are best suited at GC Foster College because we have a cadre of committed, qualified, and experienced practitioners who have already begun to engage the participants to build their knowledge and skills in the identified areas. But not only to build their knowledge and skills, but to find strategic ways to transfer learning into practice. The training program is premised on proven results and uses a tried and validated training program to include theory, which is the articulation of declarative and procedural knowledge. But it doesn't stop there. There is demonstration, modeling, practice with feedback, and follow-up technical and social support for impact and sustainability. objective of this two-week seminar is really to share what track and field is like in the Jamaican context and to see from what Trinidad based on the system you already have what can be adapted there to make the system better. The main objective of this workshop it was for capacity building. It was just sharing best practices, what works well in our education system that develops sports in Jamaica. Our task was to uplift and uh, to motivate and to provide the technical support for PE teachers, coaches and sports administrators. The methodology used is important and it involved a number of deductive and inductive teaching and training methodologies that looked at direct instruction, the master learning, the small group cooperative learning, practical demonstration, game-based learning, role play, game simulation, video analysis, um, storytelling, lessons from stories, and case studies. 
Back home in Jamaica, our education and sports is basically twin. And, and so the, the driving force behind our curriculum in Jamaica is physical education within our, our curriculum. And so the different methodologies that we use and practice, we wanted to share them so that the different successes that we would have achieved we hope that it will be replicated here. The objectives were to give them the methodologies that we use in Jamaica that has brought about our own success. So we are here in a bid to collaborate in developing a more structural sports procedure like us to become more effective in our sports, especially track and field. Participants were placed in groups, um, primary, EC, and secondary. And what we did, we had what was known as plenaries, in which all the participants were given instructions that will impact different, different groups. So everyone heard how we would approach the, the EC group, everyone heard how we would approach the primary group, and everyone heard how we would approach the secondary group. But then they, they were then placed in their different groups to practice the things that we did. What we wanted to do was to give a sense of everything that we use in our programs to all the different groups, the administrators, the teachers, and other sports coaches. One of the main focus that we got when we were coming here was that they needed us to um, just try to build capacity in, in our area, basically in secondary, primary, and early childhood. So we definitely had to strategize on how we would do that. So we, act, we didn't have all teachers, we had coaches, administrators. So definitely administrators and coaches had the opportunity to work in different areas to build their capacity and to see what is best working in the different areas and that's what we did we tried every day to do a rotation in terms of giving everybody a piece of what EC would do what secondary what primary would do so although we were in different groups we tried to have main groups where everybody would be knowledgeable on the different areas and to see how the development would start from early childhood straight up to secondary Module 1 began quite appropriately with teaching physical education in terms of philosophy, history, purpose, curriculum structure, best practices, and the foundation for sports development. Module 2 dealt with movement education at the EC, primary, and secondary levels. Module 3 looked at game skills at the EC, primary, and secondary levels. So as an early child facilitator for the program, um, it was very encouraging to see where the early childhood program was at. Um, I was quite pleased to know the knowledge that they had. Um, so it was not really teaching them, it was just a refresher program and also just to show them the best practices that we do in terms of our development that they did not have in their program. My task was to engage the youngsters at the earliest level to let them appreciate and love sport. So most of the activities would have been geared towards fun and not necessarily to, to isolate um, specific skill set. And so once the kids are, are fun and are enjoying themselves, it will, it will lead to a greater participation and thereby the, the early childhood practitioner now would then have an eye out to, to look and, and from that level you can see an area of interest and identify some talents that will be filtered over and so it would be an easy transition to the primary and, and the primary would take it from there and then it would be filtered into the, the secondary and so forth. As a facilitator in the primary group, I oversee um, 14 coaches, teachers and administrators and former track and field professionals here in Trinidad. Our role was to teach those teachers now in the primary system that if they collaborate with teachers and professionals from the EC level, that the children coming into their primary system would have already had nurturing some of the athletic strands that we are developing now at the primary level. And so when the children come to the primary, they're better able to teach them and to have a continuous program where they develop their track and field habits.
I was mainly with the secondary group and our goal was to you know, try to get the same kind of system that we have in Jamaica where our athletes are so developed, where athletes are competing at the highest level. We want to see that same success happening here in Trinidad and Tobago. And so we try to um, deliver what some of our blueprint is so that Trinidad can make their adjustments and so that they can use this as a development for their track and field. What we did was to look at um, sports from the early childhood level to the primary, secondary level and try to develop a continuum. One level feeds into the other. Ultimately, those people in the secondary school, they would move on to elite or institutional sport. But we also facilitate other sports in our secondary school level. And part of this is through our curriculum through the Ministry of Education, along with the Ministry of Sports. Module four looks at track and field with sprint and hurdles as the emphasis. The organization and structure in Jamaica, how we identify talent, the support system, and the concept and processes involved in periodization. Systems comparison was done, and research validated best practices, and actually what works best in Jamaica. Okay, so my specialization would have been track and field, to see the commonalities in terms of how programs are structured and how they thrive, to further enhance the development of um, the junior program and uh, of course the, the rudiments of training that they would have gone through taking in consideration a youngster leaving the primary school starting their journey at the secondary level the pillars that would have been set before and then the sort of work that they would need to um, either catch up on or continue with just to ensure that that level of holistic development suits the need of the child um, and ultimately the, the, the high school program so that they can make, make the smoothest transition to the senior level. So definitely for early child in Jamaica what we do is to start our competitiveness in terms of track and field and that was the main focus. So we start from that early age so that's one of the focus that we really shared and how we gear our activities especially so that um, we can have our students start competing and have that desire to compete at an early age. Our primary schools do sports in a particular way in which we develop the fine motor skills, the developing skill sets that are adaptable to smaller children that can further be developed into the major skills that are needed in sports. Well, I, I would have done the movement at the secondary level and in particular sports skill. How we develop mastery in sports skill starting from developing the basic skills, mastering the skill, then we add speed to it. After adding speed, we add a little fatigue to it. After adding fatigue, we add the other aspects of competitive nature where sport is concerned. Many of the questions that were asked as it relates to athlete participation in the sport, especially the female, and we wonder why. It comes from a simple scripture. If you teach the child certain things from their young, when they get older, it will never leave them. And in the name of sport, if it is that you teach and motivate them from an early stage, they would want to participate in this sort of, um, sort of setup right up to the next level. And it's kind of what happens in the other sport. A child loves a particular sport based on the historic moments they have, what would have happened at the grassroots level. And, and it's part of what we do with our student athletes back home to ensure that success comes from grassroots greatness. We gave several tasks to the primary group. Major tasks include um, progression, how to create the progression for the learning of skills. In Jamaica, our children are used to move into dance music and that's one of the methods we use also in our teaching strategies. So we use it in mathematics, we use it in science and now we have been going to use it in our movement education process. And so because we know that when a child is young and they begin to move to a beat, it can be consistent and so we start putting the beat to action and therefore with that our track and field movement have become more monotonous for them and more rhythmic. And so because of that, movement education has really played an explicit role in our development of our young athletes. And so 
We see it as a driving force, we see it as a tool to use, and we have always been successful in using that approach as well. During the course is to have the students on a daily basis um, give a rating to the, the different presentations. They were given a journal to do, or journals to do, where they would uh, reflect on what was done. The students are required to give their suggestion and recommendation to their country as to the way they want to see sport go. In every team sport that running is including, the same format as we do in track and field in terms of the fitness, acquiring fitness, the same process um, can take place. You will find that when the track and field season starts, you have football going on, you have cricket, you have rugby, you have other sports taking place. A significant part of what happens in the rugby, in the football and so forth is that you have to run. It is running including certain key skills that would give you an opportunity to win and part of the advantage as you would say in football is off the ball skill and if you're gonna have off the ball skill naturally you have to have some speed and agility there. The foundation naturally comes from running and then of course you develop the other skills the, the other skills that are essential to the success in the game. But we also facilitate other sports in our secondary school level and part of it is through our curriculum to the Ministry of Education along with the Ministry of Sports and so because of that we find that even within our school setup track and field isn't the only subject that is taught. Semester by semester there are different um, athletic events such as netball, track and field, football, cricket and so you find that whatever would have been learned at the EC level and the primary level they are refined in the secondary level. It is when we start to pay particular focus on you know, how to be great at these sports so that we can produce persons at the national level. Back in Jamaica, what we do from an early age, the competition starts in the early childhood. Daycare centers have uh, sports days. Many persons were very surprised that we would have preschool or a basic school championship. The participants put on a sports day. The reason for this was to see um, if what we would have imparted, the knowledge that we would have imparted on them, would have been replicated um, in a sports day, similar to what we do in Jamaica. They were tasked to do the exact things that was passed on to them in, the, in their different groups. Um, the sports day was successful. We saw the different levels, we saw the different modalities that we use in sports. All went well today. With the aim of looking at the transitioning from the EC level to the secondary level. And I must comment that they did an amazing job. It was well organized, it was competitive, and even the participants themselves, not being real athletes, they were so enthusiastic and efficient, and they put on an excellent show. All right, leading up to the sports day, what you'd realize that most of the activities, one of the things we wanted to ensure is that there, there's that synergy, that continuity from EC, primary and secondary, in terms of the quality activities that are done, activities that um, gives the child the opportunity to develop in certain areas. So by the time they reach primary and secondary, the workload that the coach or teacher has at that point is not one so difficult, but certainly one to build on. The sports day activity is a similar situation, just to capture some of the novelty events, similar to what happens in our basic school championship, and you'd have seen, seen quite a few of that. You'd have seen quite a few that are linked to the primary, and to some extent the secondary. So what makes the difference? If there's a difference there, I would think that it is in the, the hard work and competitive nature, Back home, kids might train two times for the day, in the morning and in the afternoon. Added to that, we have a number of sporting events starting from as early as September up to championship time. Our high school boys and girls athletic championship, that spectacle is really a, 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 a program that has been running for over a century. 
And so therefore, any replication of that, as you would appreciate, would not come overnight. It takes work, it takes um, collaboration between all the major stakeholders, all the major players, for sports to be developed. You just need a kind of structure and autonomy in the schools and um, school administration to promote more sporting events, especially in track and field. Doing this course was very enlightening. One thing I have to mention is that the Jamaican program, they start their early childhood education off with sports. And in Trinidad, we don't really do that. We start at the primary. So this is definitely one initiative I hope that they take up where we start at the ECCE level and we get a pool from there. Even though the children may be three, four, five, they are still able to do the activities. Uh, Mr. Marlon Gale, who was the lecturer for most of the days, he showed us videos of these little children and we were amazed at what we saw. It compares and contrasts the difference between Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica and how Jamaica have a pragmatic view or approach to training um, their athletes. They start from, from nursery all the way up to secondary, up to, to university level and you see a clear view of how they go through every system, every, every school, through a progressive way of coaching and training. It's the foundation is really, really um, good in the sense that now you have a better understanding for the gaps between our system and the Jamaican system, why they are turning out better athletes. They have a, a holistic view on things. They have a proper system, structure, set in, in, in Jamaica. We have some systems here, however, the gaps are, are there left to be desired in the sense that we are actually seeing what we have to do to improve our systems and make uh, a better push forward to becoming a, 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 a better country on the whole, Trinidad and Tobago, regards to athletes' development. The DC Fossey pro program is, is, is actually telling us about the, the gaps that we have in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, there's, so, there's so much stuff that, that we need to, to do here in terms of bridging, bridging the gap. Um, we have a lot of knowledge, knowledgeable coaches in the country, but the information needs to be shared, it needs to be linked. The periodization aspect of sports, where you actually saw the development of an entire program, where talent was identified and their skills were honed to an exceptional level where they could have competed at a championship level. It really is something that everyone who is into sports and athletics should take part in. So I was overwhelmed. The, in, the knowledge that I received was very educational and, and because I'm not a physical education teacher, a lot of the content was new to me but very valid. The GC Foster program was an amazing one. It was definitely a fruitful and impactful two weeks. In terms of the structure, in the school system, I would say that would have been the biggest takeaway for me. I have gained more knowledge on how to actually execute physical education at my level with my three-year-olds or four-year-olds or five-year-olds. Initiating the program starts with me as the individual teacher of, the, of my class. So I will literally now have to sit down and actually do a physical education plan and incorporate it into my activities when I'm teaching because we teach across the border. So it's interdisciplinary, interconnected. So taking it across, moving it in the direction that when they get to the primary level, I would have created the foundation on which they are going to stand and become physically fit and move forward to be great athletes to represent our country of Trinidad and Tobago. And we can have a coach's eye, as we were taught in the program, to see exactly who's good at what and, you know, maybe find clubs in the area that we could channel the energy into. So looking at a child who's good at running, we may be able to get a coach to take that child from an early age and nurture him, give him the encouragement, the motivation, so that when they reach to the next level of it, it isn't that much difficult for the child to fall in and grasp. There is a need for physical education. We need for them to get up, go out and not just play, but have structured programs that, you know, will warm them up. 
get them, in, as I said, do it individually, do it in peers, work with teams, develop the cognitive, the psychomotor, the affective mode, because they need all of this to go out in life. You're teaching them not just to, to maybe pass an exam, you know, but to also get them ready for life. In my school, I know I have to do more because I am doing it with my class. So I'm a primary school teacher, yes, and I'm doing it in my class. And you know, it is really hurting me when I pass with my children to go and do physical education. Other children miss when would um, my class get what your class is getting. While we may have the infrastructure with regards to sport, uh, that level of commitment, that level of dedication, that philosophy, that buy-in, so to speak, from all these, these stakeholders is not something that we can say that we have yet. But with initiatives like this, we becoming disciples, those of us who attended, it's clear to see that we would go out into the community, go back out into our schools and make disciples of men. One of the other things that came out that I would like to implement in our school is to stress to students that, hey, you know what, physical education could be a lifelong something, you know, because Far too often we see people living and leading sedentary lifestyles. You know, they, they come to school and yes, they practice and they participate, but they go home and they do nothing. They graduate, they do not engage in sporting activity for health purposes, for recreational purposes. So if we could stress that, if I can stress that in the schools a lot more, if I could also enhance the program to cater for those, those students who see athlete, uh, becoming a, a professional athlete as a feasible option for them, if I can even implement uh, an approach that tackles that, you know, I could see that going a long way in benefiting both groups. The person who may not want to be a national athlete, he becomes a lifelong physical education practitioner, and the person who wants to become a professional athlete, he also can learn from this program, this, this enhanced program that I plan to take back to the school from the things I would have gained at this workshop here. The ideas that we have gathered will continue to assist us in terms of our techniques, our strategies, and our competencies in the area of physical education, track and field, and sport on a whole. I also love the ideas from my colleagues, be it ECCE, primary, secondary, and the other sport administrators that are here. It is our hope that we will be able to emulate, copy some of the practices in order to improve the area of track and field and sport on a whole. has been very, very impactful and welcomed by the Ministry of Education. Uh, we have had 13 early childhood care teachers registered, 14 primary school teachers registered, and 14 secondary school teachers who have registered. Those who have um, attended and stayed the course, they have been fully, fully impacted. We have seen them using the skills that they were taught uh, throughout the training, and we expect that as they go forth back to their schools, they can take up lead roles in their schools and perhaps impact the physical education and sport program as regards track and field in their respective schools. This is a small fraction of the teachers who exist in our system. Nonetheless, we are thrilled that they will privy to attend and learn, glean from the skills and in fact we hope that they will um, implement accordingly in their school environment. For a while now we've been getting by, we've been getting athletes up there at the elite level. But we have not been having that firm foundation. This course helps PE teachers, helps uh, coaches, administrators to know their role, what they, you know, the, what part of that continuous chain that they enter and come in, and what is needed from them. During this course, I learned that uh, the structures in Jamaica and Trinidad are not so much different. We have basically some of the same structures. But it's the energy behind it. It's the scientific approach to what happens in Jamaica that makes, that makes a massive difference. It's the support that they get from the public, from the um, sponsors, from the parents, from the administrators. That makes a massive difference. And so if we look at the structure, which is at the, the basic level, which we would call preschool, we don't have that here. We have at a primary school. And they are very precise about what they do. And, this course actually taught us to be more precise, be more deliberate in how we do what we do. 
and we can reap the same rewards. We look forward to the implementation of these systems and structures um, coming out of the Ministry of Education um, in partnership with um, Sport and the Ministry of Sport and Community Development. There were 10 persons on that team and everyone played a crucial and a key part in the, in the development of the entire program. Passion, that was, that was really important, the passion they had for what they did and that was really good for me. Their vibes and energy was very motivating and like I said from the first day because of their, because of their enthusiasm and their, their their, their love and passion for the sport, it is what motivated me to come here every day. I was so, you know, motivated to engage in all the physical work because they, um, they instilled that, that fire within me to want more and want better for the sport. I'd also ask, like to thank um, the participants for making this whole thing very interesting. You know, we could have come here and sat down and not taken part and just taken information. But people threw them, their whole selves into it. And in doing that, we, I think we reaped exactly what we wanted here. And the purpose of this was fulfilled. And um, from what we know, what we've been hearing, it's, it's not a one and done, but it's a continuous process of monitoring and support. And so with that said, with that done, if that happens, I think we are, we are in for a really, really good program. They did a great job in terms of disseminating your knowledge and also just bringing back that spark and that enthusiasm and passion for sport here in, in Trinidad and Tobago at the early stages especially. The participants of course and they will definitely be the driving force for this on the ground and we just look forward to all the great things that we could do for sport here in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, definitely a shift in culture. Um, I think here in Trinidad and Tobago we are more academically focused and I think um, we, need to, we need to move away from that and, and understand that sport, physical education and sport along with the academics need to go hand in hand. I hope that we can all come together to really um, push and drive for a better TNT as it relates to sport. Sport can also teach you some of the values um, that can relate and take you through life to just be a better person, a better citizen. The Ministry of Education will be reviewing its policies and its structures to see to what extent we can support the application of physical education and sport and by extension, the relevant skills that we learn so that teachers can come out and apply. That's the only way we can effect change and make that impact. The division and the phys ed unit is committed to visiting the schools, meeting with you teachers who are here to support and monitor the application of the skills that you, that you would have learned here, as well as the phys ed program. They are committed to support you and give you whatever necessary guidance is expected. In terms of the coaches, and I did uh, mention it before, I'm appealing to you as well to invest in the secondary schools program, invest in your track and field, um, approach the schools through the Ministry of Education coaching policy. There is a space for you. So we, we are looking forward to the phase two of training by Dr. Dawkins and his team um, for the development of track and field among our student population. The journey has just begun. I got caught by the information. I got caught by the enthusiasm. I got caught by the just the nature of the people. And not just of GC Foster, but of you, the participants. How eager you are. The information that we got here goes far beyond knowing how to hurdle. Goes far beyond knowing how to sprint goes far beyond periodization and all of that. And as Doc put it, this is not information, this is knowledge. We are change agents. And we're from everywhere. We're from North, South, Central, Tobago, West, East, everywhere. We might be in small pockets. Don't let your light go out. When you go back to your valley, 
right? And you go back to people who don't, who who wasn't who wasn't uh, who weren't exposed to this virus of enthusiasm. Don't let them kill your joy. Go back there and work. Convince people. Let them know what can happen. We have to do something now. Three words that are etched in our minds from this entire program. Commitment, dedication, and passion. Thank you. And to, to round off everything that I've learned in the last two and a half weeks, awesome, awesome. Fantastic and colossal. It was truly exceptional. It was amazing, really amazing. So I would say, yeah, two words, driving force. <laughs> awesome. It was exceptional. Passion. It was overwhelmingly um, welcomed and uh, appreciated. Amazing. I would use amazing to summarize this, this whole course, the whole experience, I mean the friendliness of everybody. Amazing. I was encouraged by the participants and to say that I believe they really learned what we tried to pass on to them. And we also learned, you know, um, looking at what we have in Jamaica versus what they have here. Um, they were willing persons and what they did, they actually educated us on different methods that we could also develop, that we can use in our Jamaican settings. Being here, you realize that it is a total different setup from, from what we have back home. And I believe that, you know, whatever we would have done here can be used to develop and make, this, make sporting in Trinidad so much better than what it is and make it the Caribbean so much more competitive. Phase 2 and Phase 3 would be a follow-up to what we would have done and persons like my principal would, would then be a part of the, the, the training. One of the things we definitely hope for, um, for this Phase 1, is really that the participants of this phase would go out and inspire others. Um, I'm sure there are many who wanted to be here. I'm sure there are many that might not have heard about it, but we have more than enough messengers to um, go to inspire, to motivate, um, to spread it so that it can become a culture thing. And I think if it continues on that trajectory, it can snowball into something magnificent in the future. And um, I do hope as they continue, they would set their goals, at least a three-year plan, to say, okay, based on what I have learned here, what I have um, confirmed here, is something that will help me within a three-year span to look a lot better, to receive, to achieve a lot more results than I would have um, in, the, in, in, in the last three years. So I do hope that that continues. I do hope also that while they are inspired, the necessary bodies and also the institution which is in charge of everything that happens once a child is in that space that they support them that they take the ideas do the necessary analysis and follow the best practices that are there i would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the government and people of jamaica GC Foster College, the principal on the school board, and uh, my colleagues who are here with me. I would like to say thanks to the people of Trinidad, to Minister Kojo, the participants, and the Trinidadians in general. I am so grateful to be here, to be, have been selected as a part of the GC Foster team, and also thanking Trinidad and Tobago for inviting us here. This is my first experience here in another Caribbean country in the capacity that I am. And I am looking forward to future endeavors and of course, to seeing all these participants do great things for Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. There's a saying, 
you know bendy bendy tree while it is young right and um, I, I understand that because when the children are exposed at a very tender age they show you know more more appreciation and love for the sport and then they, they don't see it at first as competition but as fun and with time you know competition uh, competitive that competitive feeling develops upon people to get educated and give of themselves to actually make a difference in the community. Whatever space that you have, wherever you are, whatever equipment you have, make you suffer because that is one of the highlights of what they taught me here. Even a little courtyard, it can make a difference with anyone on any child's life. I looked at the orbital method of um, how they groom their athletes where everyone were stakeholders every important stakeholder had a vested interest in the development of that athlete and that helped focus the energies of the athlete to the towards his or her development life is a is a teaching experience and each day that you are given on this planet gives you another opportunity where you can contribute and one of the greatest areas that i believe one can contribute is as a teacher and as a teacher you have the ability to impact so much because sometimes it's not necessarily the amount but the one that you would impact because that one is able to reach sometimes even more than you are able to do but um, instead of standing by make yourself available offer yourself as consultants because your your vast years of experience would tremendously help and we have got to look beyond the now and look to the future what kind of future do i want what kind of legacy do i want to leave for my generation and the upcoming generation so i would say get involved with children and if you can guide them then be a light for them so a young kid in trinidad and tobago Work hard, be dedicated, listen to your coach, and I'm certain that you'll be successful in the future. The Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, have a number of initiatives. And one of them is the TT Moves. We also partner with the Ministry of Sport and Community Development, also with regards to Sport TT, and we are all working collaboratively in ensuring that those initiatives are outlaid. I am also saying with regards to the Ready, Set, Go project, we also have that where, one, we are ensuring that all schools do some sort of physical activity during the day, which is very, very important. With regards to the Ready, Set, Go project as well, each school is supposed to have a primary school physical education lead. So all those initiatives are on board. Some are still coming on, but we are having a number of meetings with the Ministry of Health, with the Ministry of Sport and Community Development and Sport TT to ensure that we have a healthier and more productive citizenry.